glorify his name. What a mighty God we serve. Ancient of days, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who loves you so much, the one who has good thoughts and good plans concerning your life. Appreciate him tonight. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful to you. We are grateful to you. We thank you for your loving kindness, for your faithfulness to us. It is because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. Now tonight, begin to ask the Lord to minister to you. He has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. You are the seed of Jacob. God did not bring you here in vain. You have left everything to be in church. It will be a disappointment that you are leaving this place, you are leaving empty. Ask the Lord to minister to your spirit. That one word that will change your life forever. Father, give me that one word. Let my heart be open to your word. Let my ears be open to your word tonight. Holy Spirit, speak to me tonight. And let your name be glorified. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for the privilege of gathering today in Zion. Thank you for your thoughts and your plans for our lives. Lord, we ask at this time that you minister to every one of us. Let your word come expressly. Let your word come with power. Lord, we will not just talk. We will not just discuss. Let there be a demonstration of your power. Whatever limitations... Whatever thing your children they are going through, whatever embargo the enemy have placed on these ones, Father, as your word comes forth, let those yoke be shattered in the name of Jesus. Let your word break every yoke, every ideology that is not from your word, everything that has held your people bound, let your word shatter them tonight and let your name be glorified. Holy Spirit of God, have your way and glorify Jesus in our midst tonight. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Someone who is excited, your hallelujah should be the loudest. Yeah. Hallelujah. Put those beautiful hands together for Jesus and please be seated. Don't just stop like that. Welcome the person sitting by your left, by your right hand. Welcome them. Introduce yourself to them. Remember, this meeting is not only for the marriage. Introduce yourself, tell them what you do. I am so so and so. I'm a fashion designer. I'm this, I'm that. Introduce yourself to them. I'm a banker, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a nurse. Introduce yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We trust God tonight that the Lord will be working his wonders in this place as somebody is leaving this place somebody will be seen somebody will be caught in the name of jesus if you are that person shout hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord i want to appreciate god tonight for this privilege of standing before these great people and i want to appreciate god's servant the senior pastor in this place my husband I want to thank him for the privilege of standing before God's people. Hallelujah. If he had said, no, don't go, will I say, yes, I will go? No, God forbid. Hallelujah. So I'm grateful that he has allowed me to be here this evening. And I also want to appreciate the youth leadership for and the trust that they have in me. I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen the Utah Life Fellowship in Living Faith Church, Lafia, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the Utah Life Fellowship, we will be celebrating marriages, we will be celebrating miracle jobs, we will be celebrating miracle what? Miracle houses, cars. Every Sunday, we will be dedicating cars, dedicating houses in the mighty name of Jesus. People will be entering into good courtship that will end up in marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I also want to appreciate our pastors that are here this evening. Pastor Benga is here. Pastor Prince is here. I have seen Mommy Benga. Mommy Prince is at the back. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate them for coming tonight. God is going to bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Today's topic says, getting married right and breaking 
the limitation. Getting married right and breaking the limitation. This is a very, very good topic because we live in a world that a lot of things are happening. Marriage is being attacked. The enemy knows that his time is very short. And so he's doing a lot of things, especially in the institution of marriage, to cause havoc. Because if there is no family, if there is no good family, there won't be a good society. So the devil, he knows that he's running out of time. So he's doing a lot of havoc. Not only on the planet alone, but even in the body of Christ. People are doing it wrongly. And you see somebody getting married today, and the next thing you're hearing, the person wants to come out of the marriage. Did they blind your eyes before you entered into the marriage? So what's the challenge? So tonight, the Lord will be opening our eyes to a lot of things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let's quickly define some, some terms. Let's take it gradually, and at a point, I'll be very fast, so that we can meet up with time. Daddy had said, I should not exceed 40 minutes. <laughs> I should not engage in long talk, long discussions. So I have to be very, very fast. Praise God. So let's define marriage. Like we know, or let me not assume you know. Let me just tell you. It can be defined as a successful combination of a man and a woman in a holy wedlock. Mark that word, holy wedlock. Praise God. So let's look at the meaning of limitation. You know, limitation talks about a limiting condition, restrictive weakness, lack of capacity, inability, or handicap. Praise the Lord. Now, before you can get married right, I would like for us to understand some things. That the founder, the one who instituted marriage is who? Is who? Before a manufacturer manufactures something, there is an idea, a concept, a thought, a goal in the heart of that manufacturer why he wants to manufacture that thing. Praise God. God is the manufacturer of marriage, the one who instituted marriage. There are some things that he had in mind before he did that. There are some concepts, some principles that God had in mind before he instituted marriage. If you want to get marriage right, you have to understand the concept of God for marriage. You have to understand the principles of God concerning marriage. If you don't get it right, if you don't understand it, when you just enter into marriage, it will be like a struggle. You will be struggling. You know, most of us think that, uh, you know, that um, euphoria, the euphoria that you have, you know, you just see a lady or you just see a guy. There's one thing that is tinkling, tinkling your body. Anytime you see that particular person, that is the... The feeling that you normally have. Tingling, 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 tingling you, you know? And so many persons have entered into marriage based on that. And after some time, that tingling, tingling feeling that they were having that made them to enter into marriage, the thing will not be fading away, fading away, fading away. You will not see somebody that said, if I don't hear your voice, I will not sleep. You will not see that person. That same person will not be saying, did, they, did somebody do me something before I married you? You know, what has happened? What has happened? They fail to uh, understand the concept that God has for marriage. And there are certain things that they have not yet understood about marriage. You know the funny thing? I'm happy that you are here tonight. Some people don't see a need why they should um, attend marriage seminars. Some people don't even see a need why they should go for marriage counseling. They feel that we are, we are in love. 
I'm in love with her and she's in love with me. There's no need for counseling. Sincerely, that's the kind of feeling that you get when you are, if you see somebody that you love. I've been there and I'm still there, so I can tell you. You will even feel like, is there any need reading any book on marriage? What is it that I don't know? I'm in love with him and he is in love with me. So there's no need for all of that. All those things are just euphoria, the feelings that you have. After some time, they will begin to fade away. So other people, they have not understood that romantic love have two stages. If time will allow us, we'll go into that. But let us start with the concept that God has concerning marriage so that you begin to understand some things. And your marriage, if you are married or if you are yet to marry, God is going to help you. It will become very sweet and you begin to enjoy it the way God wants you to enjoy it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's start with God's concept about marriage. I've outlined some basic um, concepts that God has concerning marriage. I'd like for you to please open up. Open up your heart. Forget about what you know. Forget about what you saw your father and your mother. They did. Eh? Forget about all those things and then follow what God is saying. As you do so, your marriage will be sweet. If it's already sweet, it will become sweeter. If it's already sweeter, it will become sweetest. If it's already sweetest, it will become sweetest, sweetest. In the mighty name of Jesus. So let's move on. The first concept here is marriage is good. Marriage is good. Some people say marriage is a necessary evil. It's not true. Everything God created, Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, everything, God saw that everything was good, including marriage. Marriage is a good thing. He said it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him and help me. God knows that you cannot survive in this world alone. You as a man, you as a woman, you need a help me that will help you. Marriage is good. It's not evil. The fact that you're seeing so many ugly things around you, probably from your parents' marriage, does not mean that marriage is bad. Some people in their heart of hearts, they are just going into a relationship so that nobody will say, is something wrong? Does this person have spiritual problem? But in their heart of hearts, my just do one. It's not like they want it. They don't want it. Why? Because of what they've seen. They just believe that all men are like their fathers. And it's not true. Marriage is good. It's a good thing. Can't you see how my life is? If marriage is not good... <laughs> Praise God! And the funny thing is that you have not seen anything yet. Praise God. Marriage is good. It's good. Praise God. Marriage involves, number two, living father and mother. Marriage involves living father and mother. If you don't get that concept right, you're going to have problems. I had a story of a young man, even after marriage, because he was living close to his parents. You see him. He will just, after work at times, he won't even tell his wife that he's going to his parents' place. He will just go to his parents' place. He will eat. He will eat there. At times, he might even pass the night there. At times, if he comes back home, he will be comparing the wife's food with his mother's food. That person, eh? He's still tied to his mother and his father's apron strings. He has not left he has not left. And that kind of a person will never succeed in marriage. I've, I've um, heard of another one, a particular sister. That one, hey, there's nothing she wants to do that she won't call her mother to find out if she should do it or not. If the mother says, okay, go ahead, she goes ahead. Doesn't matter how her husband feels. To the extent that her mother came to their home, she came to their home, she left her matrimonial bed, still sleeping with the mother in her room, leaving her husband alone. It is the mother that decides the food that they eat in the house. So because of the leg, 
because of the leg, you understand what I mean? The leg the daughter gave to the mother, what happens? The mother was not the one ruling in the house. That person is still very immature. That person is going against God's concept of marriage. And what will happen? The person will do it wrong. Marriage will never be good. Hallelujah. Amen. It involves living father and mother. When you leave, that one is not just enough. It's not just enough. The third one says it involves cleaving. It involves cleaving. You see all of that in Mark chapter 10, verse 7 to 8, and Genesis 2 and verse 24. It involves cleaving to come together. You know what? If you don't leave, there's no way you can cleave together. If you don't leave, if you don't leave your parents, I'm not telling you to abandon your parents, not to know how they are doing, not to send things to them. What I'm saying is this, your parents should not be the one dictating to you what you should do, how your life should look like. Your parents should not be the one that you would seek counsel from. And that funny thing about that man, do you know what? He got to the extent that if the wife wants to get any information from the husband, she has to go through the husband's mother. Is that normal? That one is not marriage. Praise God. God's concept of marriage, for God's concept of marriage, there has to be one flesh. The two of them must become one flesh. One plus one equals to one. It's not equals to two. One plus one equals to one. It has to be like that. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And number five here says, two alone, two alone begin a home. Two alone begin a home. Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 5 and 6. And we have some scriptures here. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. Two alone begin a home. What does that one mean? It means you have to keep your marriage bed undefied. You have to keep your marriage bed undefied. The person you want to get married to should not see your nakedness. There shouldn't be any form of premarital sex, fondling, kissing, or whatsoever. Two alone. If the sister, finally, after the two of them, they are started doing some things and she becomes pregnant, the three people cannot start a home. It is only two persons that can start a home. If the three of them goes ahead to start a home, what will happen? There will be a problem. Please, in that relationship that you're into, you have to be very careful. Listen to counsel. Like I told you before, when the thing starts, that tingling, tingling, tingling that your body is doing you, whenever you see the person, any advice some people are giving you, it will look as if they don't understand, they don't know how you are feeling. They are just talking out of sense. Praise God. You will see a sister. The brother have not even said anything. He just said, will you marry me? And she has said, uh, yes. The next thing, the sister is going to the brother's house. The brother, he has been eating, no, oh, before he met you. He, washed, he, he washes his clothes by himself before you came into his life. He does things by himself. So why are you now, they have not said, uh, Jack, you're already doing like a, a wife to the brother. You, are, you end up doing yourself great harm that you regret later. Two alone begin a home. Only two people. The man and the woman. There shouldn't be any form of third party, whether in the, in the stomach or, praise God. <laughs> Amen. The sixth one for God's concept of marriage is openness to one another. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24 to 25, they were both naked and they were not ashamed. Thank you. Praise God. Openness to one another. There shouldn't be any form of hide and seek game. You are hiding things from your partner to be, or your husband to be, or your wife to be. That marriage will not work like that. If there is anything, let the person know. You have a child, or 
you lived a very wayward life, or something just happened that that partner should be aware of, please don't hide it. Don't hide it. And even in marriage, as you enter into marriage, there shouldn't be anything that you should hide from your husband or from your wife. By the grace of God, I try as much as I can, with the help of the Holy Spirit, never to hide anything from my husband. If I want to fall into that temptation, I'll quickly be the one to open my mouth and expose myself. Because when you start doing it small, small, before you know it, the devil will push you to start doing it big, big. You hear of some things some people do. They are building houses somewhere. Their wife is not aware. They went to uh, strike a business deal somewhere. Their wife is not aware. It is wrong. It is wrong. Before you met Jesus, you had so many boyfriends. You were living anyhow. You were clubbing. You were partying all manner. What stops you from telling that person that you want to get married to? Let the person be aware. Not tomorrow. When the two of you are together, you're just going somewhere, and all of a sudden, you just saw one of those your ex-boyfriends. You just saw the guy. And maybe you see him, and the guy saw you too. You just did as if you didn't see him. You know, the guy now come close. And like, hey, Jane, how are you? Say, Sorry? Just look at him. And your husband was like, ah, he called your name. That means he knows you. He said, I'm fine. And you? Just, thank you. It does not make sense. It's better you expose yourself to the one you want to get married to and tell her or tell him everything. Everything. Let me tell you the truth. If that person is the person that God has ordained for you to get married to, eh? That person will be able to swallow that rubbish. He will swallow it and he will still be with you in that marriage. But it will break his heart or it will break her heart when later on he discovers that this was what you did in the past. You, you became pregnant for this and so person. The person comes one day and was asking you, you told me you were pregnant like... Um, um, Two years ago, I, I, just, I just feel I should make inquiries about the baby. Where is the baby? And he's saying it before your husband. How will you feel at that time? Can you dig the ground and enter inside? Eh? So it's better you are open. Open up. Open up and say everything about, about your past life. Don't be ashamed. If the man is not for you, the highest thing he will do, he will tell you, I'm no longer interested in this um, relationship. I've often shared this testimony about a lady. She was HIV positive. HIV positive. And one brother was coming to her. She was resisting, resisting, resisting. The brother was very persistent. She was resisting. The brother was persistent. So finally, she now opened up and told the guy that can you marry a lady who is HIV positive? Ah, the brother said yes. I'm telling you, this is true life story. It's not a, they got it from true life story. So the brother finally, they agreed to get married. And the marriage was done. See what they did. They heard God. Eh? They heard his cloth. In both in prayers, the sister took messages. She sat with the word of God, word study, studying his word, doing all manner. Till finally she became HIV negative. Are you seeing it? If she had kept that secret for herself, eh? Kept that secret, and the guy finally got to know after he went to the hospital and tested himself that he is now HIV positive. What would happen at that time? Are you seeing that? A brother was sharing with us in uh, Wolf B. He said, I don't know if he's, uh, I don't know the church, whether he attends it, I don't know. He said uh, that something happened. You know, they were talking about uh, divorce and remarriage. So he said, a guy got married to his sister. 
the sister did not tell the guy that she had or she had cancer, cancer of the breast. It was on their wedding night. He said the sister's breasts were like stone. The brother man knew, and the marriage was annulled. Are you seeing it? If the sister was open enough, she would have. The brother, even before the marriage, the two of them were agree in prayer, agree in prayer, and before you know it, a miracle will take place, and then they can go ahead with their marriage. So openness is something that we shouldn't do without. Don't be afraid to talk about your life. You are not in Christ. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and all things have become new. That girl that used to have uh, uh, five boyfriends, that did five abortions, she's dead. It's a new you that I'm seeing. So see it from that light. I'm a new person. I'm not a new person in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then God's um, concept about marriage, the seven point here says maturity. Maturity. Marriage is not for boys. Marriage is not for girls. I'm not talking about age here. Do you know that there are some 40 year old that are still behaving like uh, boys? They are very immature. As we go along, I'll show you some immature things that men and women do in marriage. When you look at it, you will not know whether you are really mature or not. Because some people now, as I'm saying, marriage is not for mature, uh, it's not for boys, it's not for girls. They are looking at me like, I have BS now, you know. <laughs> it's not by you have BS, praise God. Marriage is not for boys and girls. It is what you do that will show whether you are mature or not. Praise God. I would like to be very, very fast. There are some things I'm going to skip so that I can meet up with time, the 40 minutes. I don't know how many minutes I have left now. So let's be fast. Now, I would like for us to look at um, some diseases that most marriages are suffering from. Some diseases that most marriages are suffering from. Let me tell you some things. Disease is different from symptoms. Some people are saying they are no longer interested in the marriage. He doesn't have time for me. She's always nagging. He comes home late. Uh, he does not eat my food. He's always quarreling. He's always shouting at me. I'm not interested anymore. All those things are symptoms of disease that is already happening in the marriage. And sometimes they go about trying to deal with the symptoms instead of them to go and deal with the disease itself that is happening to that marriage. So there are some diseases that some marriages are suffering from that we're going to be looking at. Praise God. Some marriages, why you see that they are having issues? They are having all manner of things happening, all manner of complaints. Maybe you're here and that is what is happening to you. Complaints here and there, if it were possible. If not that you're a worker in church, maybe you'd have left, left that marriage. But because if you leave, people are going to uh, raise their eyebrows and ask you questions. That's why you're just there. I tell you, by the grace of God, as these things are exposed, you will know the disease that is causing those things, that is making you feel like that in that marriage. And God is going to be dealing with it in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Now let's look at the first one. Absence of the fear of God. Absence of the fear of God. Absence of the fear of God. One of the things, the diseases that most marriages are going through is absence of the fear of God. What are the signs? The signs that this marriage is suffering from absence of the fear of God. Number one is constant fighting, constant fighting and quarreling. When you see a man and a woman that are always fighting, they're always quarreling, they lack the fear of God. The fear of God has departed from them. Endless arguments which nobody is ready to lose. Drunkenness and alcohol addiction. They don't have the fear of God. Lack of trust. 
infidelity and night crawling, prayerlessness, lovelessness, carnality and fleshly desire, stubbornness and wickedness. All these are signs that these people are suffering from the disease called absence of the fear of God. And when that thing is like that, no matter how, how many counsel you give to them, there, there won't be any change except that thing is dealt with. You have to go back to your first love. You have to go back to where you left the Lord. Some people, they are no longer spiritual at all. The moment they just got married, they became very carnal. They just left God. Some of these things that you are going through in your marriage is because you have left the Lord. You have left God. That's why you are going through some of these things you are going through. And you are blaming your wife or you are blaming your husband. It is just a clear sign of absence of the fear of the Lord. Absence of the fear of the Lord. A man who fears God, who fears God, will not raise his hand to beat his wife. No matter how sharp the matter of that woman is. A man who fears God. A man who is spiritual. He won't raise his hand to beat his wife. If you are beating your wife here, you need to go back to Calvary. You have left Calvary. You've left Jesus. That's why you are acting like that. That's why you are acting like that. Praise God. Absence of the fear of God. And then the second one is wrong foundation. Wrong foundation. So many people have different reasons why they go into marriage or why they want to go into marriage or why they went into marriage. Most people went into marriage with the wrong reason. Some because of money, you know, some because of position in church, fellowship or society. They just see a brother. The brother is Jim, Jim, Jim. He's just, he's just everywhere in church. He's just, you know, everywhere, very busy, very zealous. And he comes to meet a sister. Please, will you marry me? The sister will not take time to pray. She just feels that, ah, this brother must be a very spiritual brother. The way he's just everywhere. He leads prayer in church. You know, when he wants to, it's as if he's sleeping in church. So because of that, you don't take out time to pray. When you hear that he's talking about foundation, foundation, it is very important. Don't play with it, though. Wrong foundation will just crumble the marriage like that. You don't marry based on somebody's commitment in church. You have to seek the face of God. Praise God. Some other persons, they married because of sex, because of lust. That's not a good foundation to go into marriage. Some they say, hey, so that I don't want to, I don't want to be sleeping around. They've been sleeping. You think that will stop you from sleeping around? If you don't come to Jesus, for him to deal with that addiction that you have, marriage will not stop it. After marriage, you will keep sleeping around. Marriage is not the cure for lust. Are you hearing me this evening? It's not the cure for lust. Praise God. So marriage because of gifts. The guy is always giving her gifts. Recharge cards. Sending recharge cards. You know, all manner. So marriage because of pity. Pity. Ew. He lost his, he's the only son. He lost his father. He lost his mother. Oh, she's the only daughter. She's this, she's that. Oh, I just like this girl. You, are, you want to marry her because of pity? No, it won't work that way. Don't marry because of pity. Otherwise, you'll be marrying on the wrong foundation. So marry because of beauty. Beauty does not last. Of course, you should know that by now. That person that is looking like sweet 16 with one beautiful face a time will come that sweet face will not be there what will you do praise god so marry with the wrong wrong foundation different things some cars immediately they don't see a brother that has a car oh my god all the eyes of sisters in the church will be on that brother he has a car may god deliver us in the mighty name of jesus he has a car. He has a car. And when Deborah just come and just say, Sis, will you marry me? The star will say, If I tell him yes now, immediately. In her mind, she wants to say yes immediately. But if I tell him yes now, he will think that I'm a loose girl. 
um, just give me some time. Let me pray about it. Give me some time. Let me pray about it. She did not go to pray. Oh. She did not go to seek for advice. Oh. She didn't go to seek for counsel. Oh. Next week in church, you just meet the brother. Um, I've considered your um, um, proposal. And, um, okay, yes. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why? Why? Look into our hearts. Why? Because of his car. He's working in the bank, or he's working in one big establishment, or his father is rich. Let me tell you, your father cannot transfer his accomplishments to you. The son of a rich man doesn't mean that the son will be rich. You cannot transfer legacy like that. It's impossible. You have to do what your father did to become or even become greater than your father. So don't marry based on those things, please. Sisters, take your eyes off that. Don't look at his car. If, it, if after 10 years, he's still riding that car, what will you call him? That car that you used to die for. After 10 years, he's still riding the same car. How will you feel? So please don't look at that. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And one other wrong foundation again that most people enter into marriage with is the wrong mental attitude. Wrong mental attitude. Some people, they, are, they have this bad thing in their mind about marriage. They don't believe that marriage is good. And you know what? It is how you think about marriage, that is how your marriage will be like. That's the truth. How you think about marriage, that is how your marriage will be like. If you feel that in marriage, we must all, always quarrel, we must always fight. When you get married, that is what will be happening to you. That's the truth. Some people, they ask, the wrong foundation is lack of preparation. They don't prepare at all for marriage. They can spend time preparing for the wedding. But the main marriage itself, if I want to ask now, how many marriage books do you have? People that are sitting here, every one of us here, whether married or married, how many marriage books do you have? If you have up to five marriage books, let me see you. Five marriage books. You see our mommy there? See, mommy, mommy have five. Young, young people, you are spending your money on recharge cards. Pinging. Okay, they no longer do pinging again. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> WhatsApp. How many marriage books do you have? Can you count of having 10 marriage books? I tell you the truth, some of the books that I have now, that I use for seminars, most of them, I got them before I got married. I can spend, by the grace of God, can spend my money on books than on clothes. There was a time I went for one seminar. Eh? I bought almost all the books that the speaker came with. And the speaker is my mentor, he's a good writer. He has a lot of books. I made sure I bought almost all the books. Ask me, do I have plenty money? By the grace of God, I do. But the little that I have then, I was investing it, I'm still investing it on books. How many books have you read on marriage? And the thing is doing it, tickling, tickling, you want to go into marriage. Pastor will say, um, anointing for people that I want to get married. You will see the queue very long. And you don't know that God is watching everybody oh. He's watching you whether you are preparing for marriage. Can you cook? How many food can you cook? How many dishes can you cook? Eh? Do you know how to take care of house? Can you mop house? Do you know how to clean house? How is your room like? And you are praying, fasting to get married. God wants you to work on these areas of your life before he brings the guy or before he brings the lady. If you don't work on those aspects, you are delaying God. For doing what he wants to do in your life. Some people, they are just the, the ones that are uh, manufacturing their own delay. It's not God. What are you doing for yourself to prepare for marriage? Preparation matters. Preparation. Go and buy books. Sit down and read. When God sees that this person is really, ah, she's really serious. See how she's using 
Uh, now, do you know that on YouTube, there's no food that you want to learn that you cannot learn on YouTube. It's just there. And all you do is to go to Facebook. You're always on Facebook sending pictures, Sunday things, Monday things, oh man, I work things and all. Use that data. Learn how to cook some foods. Praise God. Learn how to arrange your house. Your room should be looking. Learn it. When God sees that this person is getting prepared, she's ready, God will now, he will not bring the guy, he will not bring the lady. You want to get married, you are still living with your father. How will God give you a wife? Eh? So you want to marry, bring, you want to marry God's daughter and bring her to your family house so that your mother and your sisters will not sit on her head. Abby. God will not give you a wife like that. Yeah. If you like, don't like me after this. Uh, I like my husband. My husband loves me and I like myself. So if you like, don't like me after this. Uh, this I don't mind. But I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. You are not working. Your mother is still giving you transport fare. Oh my God. Hey! See, just forget about that prayer point of marriage and do something with your destiny. When God sees that you are serious, he will bring, he will bring the partner. Remember what Papa said? His friend was saying, let's pray for our future partner, marriage, that God will give us. He said, Papa said that I will join you to pray, but I'm not praying for myself. God saw that he was ready. And now, then God now brought Mama. Is it a difficult thing? No. Let God see that you are ready. Then he will bring the person that, that will suit you. Let God see that you are ready. Go and learn a skill. Sister, don't just sit at home and you keep saying there are no jobs. I'm an applicant. I'm an, a person name. I'm an applicant. I'm an applicant. I'm waiting for a job. You're just sitting at home. Go and learn a skill. If it's tailoring, go and learn how to sew. There is dignity in labor. No matter how many that job is, please go and learn. Learn how to make hair. Just go and do something. Don't sit down. God is not going to give you a life partner like that. Please. Please. Praise God. So you have to prepare. You have to prepare. Not you, the only thing you know how to cook is uh, indomie. Yeah? Your, mother, your mother will quarrel, 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 and talk, talk, talk in the house. Money till night you are in church. To even clean house, to even sweep in your house is a problem. How can God give you a serious brother? Ah! He won't give you a serious brother. It's all these yeah, yeah, yeah boys that are coming around you that is making you feel like you are one thing. You are not anything. Go and do, do your homework. Prepare for that marriage. That thing that you're believing God for, God is going to do it. But you have to prepare. Start learning how to take care of the house. How to cook. Allow your mother to rest. How can big girl like you, your mother is still the one cooking. Cooking in your house. She will cook. After cooking, she will give you food. You will eat. You are happy with yourself. Ah, a serious brother will not marry you. You have to change. You have to change. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The next disease is lack of vision. Lack of vision. Some people, they don't know what they are going, they're going. I mean, they don't know where they are going. It is only humans that cannot differentiate with their eyes between salt and sugar. Let's bring an ant, an ant to this place. Put salt and sugar. The ant will not go and test it though. As the ant is coming, the ant knows the one that is salt and the one that is sugar. That's a parable. Use your tongue to count your teeth. Praise God. Lack of vision. Some people, they don't, have, they don't know where they are going. They don't know where they are going. They don't know what they want. They don't know the kind of guy or the kind of lady that they want to get married to. They don't know. They don't even have heavenly vision. How can a, a couple that have heavenly vision, will you be fighting... Will you be the man go talk one, you go talk to, when you know that rapture can take place at any time? People that have heavenly vision, will you be sleeping around? You are dating, you are sleeping around. Will you be doing that when you have heavenly vision? They don't have that. Some people, they don't have matrimonial vision. 
They don't know what, what, what they want from the marriage that they are going into. If you ask, if I should ask now, if there was time, I would have asked. Uh, this person you say you want to get married to, why do you want to marry the person? The answer that I will get is because I love. Do you know what they call love? Is this somebody's name? <laughs> Praise God. It's not too late. We can sit down to do something. State the vision for that marriage. State your vision. The first one should be heavenly vision. The next one, matrimonial vision. And then the next one is progress vision. Where do you want to be in five years' time? Where do you want to be in ten years' time? And how do you hope to accomplish all of that? Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Another reason why um, disease that people have in their marriages is ignorance and lack of wisdom. Ignorance and lack of wisdom. I'm going to say some immature things that men do in marriage. I'm going to read through. I'll be very fast. Some immature things that men do in marriage. The first one is rejection of food cooked by their wives because they are angry. Have you seen that before? Have you seen that before? My father did that. So I've seen it. Praise God. They reject food that their wife cook because they are angry with their wives. The other one, telling their wife several times, I am the head of, the fam of this family. You don't need to say that. She knows. Shouting when arguing with their wives. Issuing threats of divorce. Beating, marrying another wife or leaving the house. Abandoning the house because of misunderstanding. Competing with their wives. Feeling of insecurity and jealousy. Keeping of malice. Keeping diaries of offense. Nagging, loving their mothers more than their wives, abusing their wives, making things generally difficult at home, criticizing their wives, accusing their wives and mother-in-law of being witches, fighting with their wives on the streets, embarrassing um, their wives in the public, calling their wives fools, goats, animal. There are some, wife, there are some men that call their wives all manner of names. Those men, are, those men they are very immature. Blaming their wives often, failure to take care of family, transfer of their frustration from office to their wives, being unloving and uncaring, you know, all manner, it's so many, it's so many. Immature men still give room for lust in their hearts, to, no matter the age. You see them, their eyes are still after other girls. Those men, they are not mature. They are full of consistent complaint. They are closer to their mothers, their friends, their siblings than their spouse. Not accepting blame for any wrong, any wrongdoing. They are always right. They are always right. Those men, they are not mature. And you hear them say something, talking to their wives about their ex-girlfriends, comparing their wives with other women, comparing their wives with sisters in church. If you like those sisters, the way they dress, what stops you from giving your wife money to start dressing like those sisters? Eh? Or to start making her hair like that? If you give her money, no matter how ugly you think she is, give her money. Carry one million and give to her. Tell her to go and buy clothes. Go to a makeup studio. Let them teach you how to do makeup. Make your hair for you. And see if that woman, if you see her on the street, if you will not toast her. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. There are some immature things women do also in marriage. There are some immature things. It's just similar to that of the men. You know, you have them declaring war on their husband, competing with their husband, leaving the house dirty and unkept, spiritually dead, without any prayer life, no time to read the Bible, refusing to cook because they are, they are, they are angry with their husband, abusing and cursing their husband, constant outburst of anger, challenging their husband to beat them. You see some women, beat me now, beat me now. If you're a man born, you will beat me. All those are immature. You watch the drama now. The woman was a dickiness and she is still talking to her husband as if she's an unbeliever. Praise God. Okay. Praise the Lord. All of those things are immature things people do in, in marriage. Praise God. And then the next disease is lack of living and cleaving, like what we have discussed, lack of living and cleaving. The next one is stopping the chase. Stopping the chase. Stopping the chase means 
because you are not married, you don't even see any reason to be doing those things that you were doing when you were in courtship. You no longer, when you just come home, say, you don't even, to even call the woman during the day is a problem. You don't even call her. You just come home. You just, to even go out to go to somewhere to shop or to eat together, you don't do that anymore. So don't stop the chase. Don't stop the chase. Keep chasing her as if you're not married to her yet. And the next one is feeling of insecurity. The next one, impatience. The next one, failure to pray. The next one, failure to drop old baggage. Next one, lack of laughter. The next one, pride and arrogance. And uh, pride and arrogance, that's the last one. Oh, manna, we don't have all the time. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I trust God that he has been able to bless you from what you have had. I'd like for us to bow our heads. Bow your head and ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. You see, it's not by power. It is not by mind. It is by the spirit of the living God. Don't say, how can I? It's impossible. I can't leave that man, no. I want to, I, I just, he's the one paying my school fees, so. He's the one helping me, oh. I don't have anybody, oh. That's why I'm, I'm opening my legs for him. That's why I'm living in his house. That's why I'm doing this, oh. You don't have any excuse. God is more than enough. I don't know what you're going through at this time. I don't know where you are. It might be that you've been involved in premarital sex. Jesus is here this evening to deliver you. I'd like for you to open up your heart to him and tell God the way you are, the way things are for you at this time and ask for his help. Ask for his help. Ask for his forgiveness. Lord, I want to begin to live for you. I've made some mistakes. Please forgive me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me and help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. You cannot tell me to do what you know that I cannot do. It's because because you know I can do it. That is why you're sending your words to me this evening. Lord, help me. Give me the grace to live for you. And if you're here, you know, if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, I'd like for you to simply ask Jesus to come into your heart, to be the Lord and Savior of your life. I don't care where you have missed it. Jesus is here to turn things around for you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, adoration, and thanksgiving. We ask, oh God, that your word we have received today will be a fruit in us, the kind that will last and that we abide forever, and none of us will ever miss it in, in life and in destiny and in marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Be thou exalted forever, for in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you were blessed by that expository teaching, put your hands some more together for Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mommy. Okay, we have our daddies and our mommies here. We are going in the marriage, and I'm personally led to give to somebody. Most I tell my partner every time I want to give to someone. If you don't start now to learn how to tell him or her when you are doing things, that is how you start giving out big big money and the day he will discover he will discover all those small small ones you have been giving out so it's good to set the precedence right are you know what i'm saying now now i'm talking from practical example my wife looked at my phone what was this meant, money meant for you sent so and so money to so and so person i must explain a lot need a lie Two of us. A lot need a lie. So you must start learning how to do it. And you must give reason why you did it. Let her know the reason why you did it. If you do it and you are hiding it, it goes to show one day. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now the reason why you need to like let your husband know, don't call it a surprise. I had a pastor. A pastor is married with four children. Now, Someone whom they were in love together before he now got married. At a point now, the woman was still telling him that um, I'm still feeling something for you. He came and told me, I said, this woman has suffered for you. I hope you know 
that you have been jobless for over five years. Now this woman, she's a senior staff in the local government. She has been the one taking care of you, taking care of the children. Now you are now feeling something for the woman. The woman will be buy the charge card, 3,000, 5,000, and send it to your phone. I say, change your line. If you don't change your line, do you know what the woman now did? The woman started building another house in Lagos. The husband was now away, meaning he was preparing for Pastor Jude. Meaning that one day, by the time he has finished the house, he said, Pastor Jude, I get another house. I get another, we can relocate. We can relocate. Before you know what's happening, the marriage will scatter. Don't try it. If you want to give your husband a surprise, let it be that you're already in the family. Uh, you build a house and you move together. Not that uh, you are building something somewhere. Uh, in any case, let me still tell you, there is no way you are building a house. One day, mercy man will come. Paint and go come. All this painter, messy man that is coming. What is happening? Okay. I'm looking for mother. What's happening? Mother, give me work. For where? <laughs> Book and CD. Eh? Give you work for Book and CD. Okay. What's the level of the work now? Eh, you never give me my balance complete. Okay, I will give you the balance. Let me go and see the level of the work. You will now use wisdom and follow the mercy man and go and see the level of the work. How will you feel? Surprise. It's no longer a surprise. There is an agenda. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Scripture says, let not your good be evenly spoken of. Please be careful. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Does that answer your question? Or you are not satisfied with that one? <laughs> Praise God. My question is, during your relationship through courtship, how were you able to control urge for sex? Urge, urge for sex. That's a good question. Now, let me tell you. Be blunt. In this courtship, no sex. If you don't say it, you know the thing they start with hand. Am I correct? From hand, the, the hand will get electric shock. <laughs> In this courtship, no sex. When you say it, and your body begins to do you thingy thingy, you will remind your body. But we agreed, no sex. If he tries to like make a move, I shall be we said it, no sex. There was a young man in Jaws. He was going out with his sister, a member of the church. So the sister, he told the sister that if you know agree, this relationship is cut. So the sister came and told me that this is what he said. I said, leave him. Am I your pastor? She said, I said, leave him. He left the young man. Now, when he left the young man, the mother was no longer seeing the girl, was not hearing from him. So he now asked the, what of this girl now? He said, leave her, let her go. And good thing, the mother has the girl's number. He now called the girl. I no longer be see you. What's really happening? Mommy, it's all is well. Do you know what happened? He now came and asked me, say, tell the mother the truth. Mommy, all is not well. Your son say in one sex, and my pastor said I should tell him no. The woman now called the son and began to lash the son. That that's the real wife. That's the real wife. So he was still doing gra gra. I said, leave him alone. If you, if you won't marry, you go there ready. If you are not prepared, you are not prepared. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let me tell you the implication. If you start having sex before marriage, I bet you the man no go stop. He go still the one. He go still the one. All the people that are suffering it today, they say, let's just do it. We are getting married now. I have told you I'm married. I'm, I'm, I'm not changing my mind. Don't worry. By the time you finish, you go still the one. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Before the courtship. In fact, the moment you say, yes, we go marry. Rule one. 
no sex till after marriage. If you say it and his countenance change, it's not really. It's, that's the kind we call hit and run. Are you getting it now? It's not that uh, you will say it and he will now begin to do bone face. Okay, say so okay. Let me add something. Please add it. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. You can say uh, no sex and you, the Bible says we should avoid all appearances of, of evil. You understand? Don't just stop at no sex. What you should do, the two of you shouldn't be together. Say you know that tingling, tingling feeling? It's there and it's natural. So the two of you shouldn't be together alone. Don't stay in a place together. Stay in an open place. If you want to see him, stay in an open place. Don't be going to his house alone. He shouldn't be coming to your house alone. But there should be a space. When nobody is around. When nobody is around. No. Because if you, if you do like that, you will not be able to resist that temptation at that time. So put the devil where he belongs. Don't, don't come. Don't stay together with him alone. And as you are, if, he, if he looks as if the, um, avoid hugging, hugging, kissing, he's, he's pecking we are doing now, avoid all of that. It's what you are going to do for life when you are married. So why rush into it and eat the forbidden fruit and suffer for the rest of your marriage? Hallelujah. Okay. I, I should talk again. No, I want to read out some questions here. Some are... Uh, Repetition. I think when you're talking, you cover some of them. The first one I say, is marriage an achievement? And is it advisable for a third party to settle the home? And then the other one say, at what stage is it good for one to be open to, the, to his partner? Also, adding to that, say, the person also said, the person can be using your openness against you. Using what? Your openness, what you've told the person about yourself. When, for instance, you guys might be quarreling, and then the person might be using those things against you. You know, we talked about maturity. If someone has opened up to tell you everything about him or about her, and you are now using it against the person, you are still a boy. You are not a man. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The reason why the person did all that is to win confidence and trust that there is nothing I am hiding from you. If you are now taking advantage of it and now begin to attack the person, you are still a boy and you are still a girl. Now, you ask the question, is marriage an achievement? Hear me? You will underachieve in life if you are not truly married. So marriage is an achievement. Because the moment you step into that level, your success level changes. Scripture says one shall chase a thousand. Two shall chase how many? It's an achievement, man. In most organizations, your leadership rating is judged by your marital status. So if you are not married, there are some level of positions you can never cross. You say, this person that has not managed a home, he can't manage an organization. He can't lead a team. He can't lead a people. So marriage is an achievement. They use it to check whether your head is correct. Am I saying the truth? They use it to check whether your head is correct. For this person to be married, he knows some, he can manage some levels of emotion. There are some levels of offenses he can manage. So they will use it to rate you that this person, yes, he has crossed a level. Is it clear now? Is there any other question inside that one again? Okay. Okay, this one here. Say, please, ma, the man that I am about getting married to, he cares and loves me with certain things, but he has done he has done some things but the problem is that i don't feel the same way he feels for me i don't love him should i go ahead with with the marriage thief <laughs> you don't they call her the thing you know still like her what did they do there if you don't want him tell him i don't want you why are you still collecting his things <laughs> Let me tell you, sisters, please be careful. If you don't want somebody, stop collecting his gifts. It is not right. It's unscriptural. Look, the moment you start collecting somebody's thing, meaning, I don't agree. Why are you collecting it? 
You are still practicing what they practice outside. Do you know, look at, a young man has been spending his money taking care of this girl, doing everything. He didn't know that the girl never wanted him. When the girl finally told the young man that he didn't want him, do you know what the guy did? He collected gun, blast the girl head. The same way you are crafty, you too you will be crafty one day. Tell him point blank. Don't wait. Don't wait by the time he has spent over one million on your head. Um, the way I'm seeing this thing, I don't think it will work. Eh? You know it will work. But you don't they chop the money since. Please, oh, don't go and put yourself into trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, he, he likes me, uh, but, but uh, I know like you, I know like you. Please tell him. Don't wait and be eating his money. You are playing a worldly game. In fact, you are giving yourself a wrong start. A wrong start. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You can live without his gifts. Please hear me. You can live without his gifts. You were living before he met you. Am I saying something now? So why would you not be playing pranks on the person? He's spending money, buying something for you. And you, are, you are chopping it and you're in your mind. You know that you don't like him. You go for me to one day. <laughs> so please, oh, if you are in such a situation, back out. Back out now. It's safer and better. Yes. A God fearing man should not raise his hand to beat his wife. What if the wife slaps him first? Should I say something? Before your wife gets to that level, something must have been building up. It must have been. Offenses must have been piling up, waiting for the climax when the thing go bust. Are you hear what I'm saying now? And um, before your wife slaps you, there must have been signs of fight. Am I correct? You can't just raise your hand. It does not happen one day. It takes a process. Any man that will beat his wife have practiced it in courtship. Did you hear what I said? Any man that will beat his wife has practiced in courtship. And uh, do you know that some sisters, they like the beating. They see it as a sign of love. <laughs> he loves me, that's why he's beating me. It's a lie. He didn't love you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But don't provoke your wife to the point that she will raise your hand to slap you. Should I say something? Before a woman will do that, you must have been cheating on her. She must have caught you with another woman. Am I saying the truth? It must not be food. It must not be clothes. You must have caught you red-handed. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And because her temperament level has not gotten to the level of control in that area, she, the first thing she gives you is boza slap. So please, I beg you, be sincere to one another. Don't do anything that suspicion will come. And let it not get to the point where she will now catch you. May you not be caught in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I saying the truth? <laughs> All right, sir. So this one said, is it okay for a female to contribute financially to support the person she wants to get married to? That is, regarding marriage expenses, since he is not financially buoyant enough. Not that he's not working. Yes, he's working, but his financial muscles is not enough. Eh, uh, he's okay. You are very okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, before a woman will do that, let me tell you the truth. She must have seen a future in you. It's just that there is a temporary setback financially. She must have seen... Look, guess their hair correct too. I'm the one telling you their hair is correct. Their hair correct. Where, where? When they, when they have seen a future in you, 
if they have it at that point in time, they will support you. Because they know that before they met you, you were industrious, hardworking. You were on the go. You had a drive. So if there's a temporary setback now for them to get this thing done, they will support you. And it is not a bad thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Even the family itself, they will support you. Why? Because they must have made one or two, three inquiries to know, this guy, is he okay? He's okay. If they just find out that he's okay, they will even support you to make sure that everything is uh, carry go. So is, is it, you are in order. Did you hear me now? Uh -huh. So this one says, sir, when you were a bro, that's directly to you now. Yeah. How did you manage ministry and relationship in terms of creating time for your partner? Praise God. Now, mommy said something which many are failing. You want to marry, you are not preparing. You think it's only prophecy. Don't you know that prophecy is a responsibility? Many don't know. Many think that prophecy is here. God has said it is final. You now have a walk inside the prophecy. Now, before then, if you, if you, if you, have, you have been to my house, one section of the library is marriage books. Marri you can't find any other thing there. It's marriage books. You must have been reading and reading and reading. So to cope with the work, now, you ask me a question, I'm answering your question. Oh, the person is here. <laughs> now, number one, the vision God has given to me, who will fit into it? There are more than a thousand and one sisters in the church. You don't just uh, go by a physique, she yellow, she gets good hips. Now that one you go chop. Just like she said, watch out when you enter into marriage, all those things will soon fade. It will soon fade. We don't marry because of sex. Because sex does not cure lust. I'm telling you, sex does not cure lust. It is your discipline that keeps you from lust. Now, the moment you know your vision, you know where God is taking you to, who can fit into that vision? Not all sisters can fit into it. But every sister wants to marry. That's where you need prayer. Lord, you must give me someone that will fit this vision. That will help me arrive at where God has in mind for me. I don't want to make a mistake of choice. And so I began to pray. After the prayer, do you know what? I found that in Wobi, LDC. I was the one that went to teach. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I'm a very sensitive person. You already know that. So after the class, I called my accountant. I said, find out who this person is. After finding out, I said, can I have the information? From having the information, I said, I, said, I called one woman and said, Mama, put eye for there for me. I called another one and said, put eye for there for me. I have not told her anything. No. I told my pastor, I said, help me tell your wife, put eye for there for me. I have not told her anything. I have not even invited her. So the first time I invited her, she thought she came for counseling. She didn't know that that's the day the bomb will land. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I just gave it to her. Boa. It was like a shock. She just carried her back. I said, any day your answer already come back. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I was sure this fit into what I wanted. So immediately I told Bishop, I told my mentor, simple. So they now sent uh, the other pastor to, to be sure. Now when your mentor has an eye for you, they must make sure that you don't make a wrong choice. They will check it. Was his head correct or he was moved by the body? You know, there are many things that everybody is looking for. Some they look for open teeth. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some they look for people who get fat body. No. Some they look for people who they yellow. But hear me, look for character. Character doesn't hide. Shabby, you have had it now. Yes, he has had it. Okay, let's have you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sir, um, I want to ask a question regarding someone. The Bible says, it's as the Bible has made it clear that someone that who cannot provide for his family is worse than an infidel. So in a situation where a man who is ready to marry is of age, he has a partner, who is, and the partner is also ready, but pocket evidence is not there. He has, a, he, has a, he has a qualification, but he, ha, he, didn't ha, he don't have a job. That person doesn't have a job, but, uh, and he's ready to marry. So, but, but the pocket of this is not there. So, what Should I tell advice you will you give to that person? You are not ready to marry. Why say you are not ready to marry? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, and even the sister, be careful, though. If the sister is here, be careful. Why I say you should be careful? If you don't have money to marry, there is a misplacement in your priority. What your prayer should be, Lord, give me a job. When God gives you a job, the next thing is, Lord, give me a wife. Not, you are praying, Lord, give me a wife. God will not answer that prayer. In fact, that's the reason why things are hard for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The prayer should be first, Lord, give me a job. Because giving you a job is a sign that you are going to be responsible. Now, you are not yet responsible. You are saying, Lord, give me a wife. No. God does not respond to us according to our feeling. God responds to us according to priority. 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 If you don't have a job, where will you, how will you take care of the woman? And funny enough, you should understand by now that Marriage in Africa, you are not just marrying your wife, you're marrying the family. You're marrying the family and you also have a family. So if you don't have a job, how will you be able to assist from this side, left and right? So God give me a job first. I hope you're okay now. Uh -huh. Okay, one here. Sir. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. <laughs> in my case... A man who is worthy enough, his business is blossoming, he's doing well. Yes. All of a sudden, the business failed, and the wife, she be the one providing now. And you know, women, they're always at the receiving side. He said that man who could not pre provide for the family is worse than an infidel. Yes. And the woman now, her own business is doing well. But because of the man has a problem now, she don't want to bring her money to help to gather the family. Not that the man has four hands, he's still striving, making sure that he gets something to lay hand upon, but it's not forthcoming. And the wife now begins to nag the man, call him on mana. The house, the work that she used to do, she's no longer doing. She begins to use the man now. The man now will turn to a house, house help. To, to, praise the Lord. Should I tell you something? You know, I said before marry when nothing is showing because because of immaturity some people don't see themselves marrying someone who is wealthy as having a leverage what do i mean what do i use the word leverage you are being raised to a level meaning you have been delivered from suffering. You have been brought into a good platform to have a good start. And now things are working. All of a sudden, things are no longer working well for the man. Now, by God's wisdom, by God's wisdom, your head should be correct that it is only but for a moment. Scripture said, though I fall, he said, rejoice not over me, O enemy of my soul. He said, do I fall, I will do what? Rise again. If the man rise, eh? if the man rise back, that woman will suffer. Mark my word, I'm a pastor. The reason why I say the woman will suffer, if 
money starts flowing back now, the woman will not see it. She'll be, you have money. Eat your money. He will now be taking care of every other person, relations, brothers and sisters. You that claim that you have money and you couldn't stand by him in this temporary moment of setback, he will pepper you. I'm the one telling you. Except the woman changes now. If she does not change now, eh? Fire day. I'm the one telling you, fire day. The moment that man rises back, he will build up all those things, all those torture that the woman has given to her. Eh? He will give her back. He will give her back. So if you know the woman, go and tell her that this is what your pastor said. Because the man will bounce back. And when he bounces back, he will have a mate. Salah. You know what I say? He will have a mate. The man may not bring the woman to the house. He will be camping the woman and outside. Write it down. I said so. So please tell her. If you, I'm sure you know the person. Tell her to be careful. Because that man will definitely bounce back. And when he bounces back, he's going to bounce back bigger. Mega. This time around, she may not have a space. So, if it was a manipulation or the relations that we are telling her to do that, tell her to stop because it will not last. Are you getting it now? Okay, before the last question, mommy, somebody said all those seminar uh, materials, yeah, they need the names and authors so that they can lay hand on them and then get... Uh, please, before we get to that, all sisters, raise your hand. If you are due for marriage, raise your hand up. All the sisters, if you are due for marriage, raise your hand up. Oh, you are not due for marriage, Abby? You are not due for marriage. You come to listen to free seminar. Should I tell you something? Should I tell you something? Listen, listen to what I want to tell you now. Between now and December, you must buy nothing less than 10 books. Are you sure you want to marry? You must buy nothing less than 10 books. Start reading and preparing yourself. I've always told you love is blind. Marriage will open your eye and correct your head. Start reading books now. Start preparing yourself. There are too many things to be learned. All this one, I've not seen you. To, throughout today, I didn't see you. You didn't call me. You go fade away. You will be faced with stark reality. Start reading books now. The fact that you are reading is a sign that you are preparing. You are preparing not for wedding. You are preparing for marriage. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If you don't have up to 10 books, you are not really prepared. You are not really prepared. You are just fantasizing. I want to marry, I want to marry. Even God to know that you are not serious. The angels can appear in the church. Lord, she's not still ready. The one I'm seeing her, she's not still ready. Let's still hold the man back. Please, start buying my... Uh, innocent. After now, come and meet mommy. She will tell you the marriage books that you need to... Be buying it as you are seeing them. Call them, say, tell them, say, Pastor, the book don't come. Please, I, I, I want you to get this thing right. Now, knowledge helps to give you a good foundational takeoff. May you not miss it. In Jesus' mighty name, I think we are done. Yes, sir, but please just answer this one. In addition to no sex before marriage, what after marriage you, dis you now discover that the, the guy's manhood cannot erect? What will you do? Repeat your question. In addition to marriage, uh, no sex before marriage, what after getting married, you now uh, discover that the man's manhood cannot erect. What will you do? You remember we said you should tell yourself everything. You must be able to tell yourself everything. If the person gets to discover, it means that you were doing something before now. How come all of a sudden your man would need a walk? Meaning you were doing something and you didn't tell her. Now she don't enter the marriage, she can't discover. Be like, say, this guy, they do something before now. How come all of a sudden a man would need a walk? 
Meaning that there were some things he's doing before now. Now that she is married, she has discovered it. She will not trust you. You have killed trust. You have killed trust from day one. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, let me ask you, make I ask you back. Can you just all of a sudden stay and your man who need to walk again? Eh? <laughs> Meaning that the person has been doing something and he, should, he didn't want the sister to know. Now, they have finished wedding. Let me just say maybe it's the first day. Bang, bang. <laughs> what will not happen? What will you say? Talk. <laughs> I'm not saying are you. <laughs> now the person will ask the question. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please be sincere. Tell him everything. And tell her everything. If you need spiritual attention after the marriage or before the marriage, you start. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? This uh, I lived a very rough life, and I noticed that uh, this this is exactly what's happening to me. You say, ah, please oh, go to see a doctor, go for prayer, so that this thing will be taken care of. Not that uh, after we are finished marrying, now we are not having problem. Now, if you hide it, if you hide it, and after the marriage, you discover, oh, uh, eh? You say what? It's enough to annul the marriage. There is one that happened like that. The mar in fact, after the, this thing, they just scattered the thing. There's one, the sister never knew that the brother had STD, high level. You know, STD, they level by level. Do you know what? After their marriage, they met. The guy traveled abroad. You know, reach one month. You know, reach one month. The sister catch sickness. And as she catch sickness, do you know what happened? She started hard work, having what we call pulse discharge. Pulse. Pulse discharge started coming out. It was that terrible that nobody knew in church. It took the courage of my associate pastor to tell me, sir. She no one tell you, or might tell you. So immediately he told me, I confronted her. What's that thing you are carrying in your hand? What's that thing you are carrying in your hand? She started crying. From crying, she started telling me the story of what happened. This guy just came from U.S. You know, our sisters, the light brothers, they come from U.S. Away. He said he didn't tell her his medical history, that he had this challenge, and after... They had sex together. We started feeling the symptoms before you know what's happening. Started having post discharge. So immediately, they didn't waste time. They returned the dowry. The parents returned the dowry immediately. After they returned the dowry, she was now faced with her life. And by the grace of God, say with me, the grace of God. I prayed for her with the anointing and communion. The thing died. She has remarried. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's just like what you are saying all of a sudden. It is no degree work. Now, like, what do I want to degree work? Then born you born like that? Lie, lie. There is no paraventure. I refuse paraventure. How can you say paraventure? There is no paraventure anywhere. Are you the person? <laughs> Are you hearing me now? There is no paraventure anywhere. There is no smoke without fire. Something must have led to something. How can you just say paraventure? Paraventure with it. Eh? <laughs> you must have adventure before there was para. Are you hearing me now? <laughs> Praise God. You are blessed. No one of you will fail. Please for the brothers also. Apart from buying marriage books, buy books on vision. 
buy books on entrepreneurship buy books on business success whether you like it or not you know all of a sudden now um is a prof the prof that took delivery of jesse david you know he's a he's a prof he's a ghana he's a senior prof now he's not talking about business do you know why he's not a family man expenditure level don't change level you don't they face what they call money reality now hear me no matter what you are doing you will spend money and you will need money so start learning how money is made because you will run a home you don't run a home with pure water you run it with loaded pockets rise up to your feet so start now don't say I'm, a, I'm pastor if you are a pastor and you don't want to do something you'll be a begging pastor and when you become a begging pastor you cannot earn respect of members are you hearing what I'm saying now no matter how much members do something there's what they cannot do for you so start tell your neighbor start start reading books buy books buy books on entrepreneurship on vision how money is made learn financial look let me tell you what i'm going to do for my children they already know that i'm preparing for them i want to i'm preparing their own course on financial literacy that's my field I'm growing to become an expert in that area. The moment they finish SS3, before they enter university, I will run them on financial literacy. So that they will now know how this thing works. Because the son of the rich man is not a rich man. They must learn how to make their own money. They must learn it. Rise up to your feet, everybody. No one of you will be a failure in marriage. Everyone that is in marriage, I pray for you, your home will begin to be sweeter. New visions, new doors, new dimensions of favor, new levels of health. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. Whatever was your success level before now, I decree a forceful change of position for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree you blessed. Anyone that have entered into a, a wrong relationship, I decree God's intervention and deliverance. No boy, no, no, no man or woman will crash your life. Anyone Satan has positioned for you as a brother or as a sister, and you know that you know that this person cannot match where God is taking you, I decree intervention for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is hidden, let it be exposed. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You will get it right this time. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.